It is that time again in the nation called Kenya when the entire nation holds its breath. When people literally stop breathing. Yeah? And then they wait. And they wait. And people cast their votes. And the results are announced. And then people wait. And then they start breathing again. <sighs> yes. We are about to go into a general election in Kenya. Very sad, but this is the reality. This is the time when the country holds its breath. When Kenyans hold their collective breath as we go into an election. Of course it should not be anything like this. Of course general elections come and go every five years. And of course it is true as those who are trying to promote the BBA were telling us. And especially President Uru Kenyatta. That we waste so much time, valuable time, because of a general election. The period of campaigning, not much is being done. And then people casting their votes, everybody scared and at home. And then waiting for the results, everybody is postponing business deals, postponing things until after the elections. Yeah. Some people even fly out of the country. There are reports that some doses have flown their families out of the country. The excuse is that it's a holiday. Lakini the truth is, they'll only fly back after Kenya starts breathing again. And that will be after the elections. After the results have been announced and the reaction of the people is observed. Now what wana sikiliza inchi wasikie Kenya inasema nini? How sad. But folks, that is what my show is about today. And there are so many super fascinating things. I'm sure you did not know that you will know by the end of my show today. So karibu sana. I'm sure you're going to find this super super fascinating. Twende kazi. About three years ago, some people warned us about the current situation we are in in Kenya today. But we were too emotional. And we were led by some leaders who didn't care less. Yeah, because leaders are supposed to understand more than the ordinary folks. Leaders are supposed to lead. But we were all told it is not time. For the BBI. We were told they are the priorities. We were told so many things. We were told the BBI is evil. But here we are. On the eve of our general elections. And there is so much tension in the country. People have no idea what will happen. After the elections. Businesses have halted. Slowed down operations. Everybody is saying, let's do this after the elections. Let's do that after the elections. Now, if you want to know just how serious things are, even romantic meetings, dates, people are telling each other, tuta meet bada uchaguzi. Ay, 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 yeah. True story. I've not made that up. In other words, the lives of Kenyans are at a standstill until 
after the elections. What? Now, I want us to go a little deeper and analyze the current security situation in the country. Yeah. In readiness for the general elections. And try to predict what is most likely going to happen after the general elections. Because usually the trouble comes after the general elections. Indeed, after the results have been announced. Now, it is super fascinating that this time round, our internal security boys are much better prepared than they were in previous years, especially in 2007, 2008. And there is a political reason. And this political reason is linked to a man called Raila Amolo Odinga. Very, very closely linked. You see, in 2007, we were coming to the end of the first term of presidential candidate Mwai Kibaki. Now, Mwai Kibaki had been swept into power by the National Rainbow Coalition, the opposition at that time. And one of the things the opposition was very much against was the dreaded, hated, loathed provincial administration. The provincial administration at the grassroots level is perhaps best illustrated by this man called the chief, who is not elected by anybody. Yeah, the chief of your village is usually appointed by the government carefully hand-picked and appointed, is actually the president's representative in that small village of yours. Yeah, not many people don't know this. Now, in the Moi days, the provincial administration harassed Kenyans. For instance, if there was a fundraiser, they were given a target. So they would go to each and every poverty-stricken homestead and take what needed to be taken in order to meet the target. Maybe take the only chicken you have. Take the last goat you have in the homestead. Yeah. The provincial administration also included people like DOs. The current UDA deputy president or deputy presidential candidate, Rigadi Gashagwa, was a DO. Yeah, and I believe Kenyans now have become very familiar with some of the stuff he got involved in. Like dealing with the opposition. <laughs> Making sure they don't have meetings. Spying on them. And many times, in their eagerness to get promoted, they would easily pass false information to the central government. And the opposition people would suffer a lot. Yeah. The provincial administration had license to harass you, assault you violently. Yeah, like what was done to the wife of gallant second liberation hero Kenneth Matiba. Yeah. And nothing would happen to them. Yeah, they were above the law. And so when Mwai Kibaki took over, one of the first things on his table was to get rid of this thing called provincial administration. And indeed, in the first few months of the Kibaki administration, the provincial administration was barely operating. It was invisible. And meanwhile, if I may remind you, Raila Odinga in parliament promised Kenyans that the provincial administration would officially be gotten rid of. Yeah, a few Kenyans were keen and have the memory of an elephant. Will remember that. I've featured this before on videos on this channel. And then something happened. The government of Moe Kibaki became very unstable. Indeed, many analysts were predicting the government would not survive for long, the Moe Kibaki administration. And therefore, Kibaki handlers in desperation approached former President Daniel Torre teacher of Moi for advice on how to stabilize the Kibaki administration. 
uh, this was some time in 2004 2003 2004 when the kibaki administration was still changa sana he had just started now of course we don't know what they discussed in private but what we saw after that meeting was a very deliberate effort to revitalize and energize and bring back the provincial administration and when this was done kibaki's government stabilized but of course it was all going on chini amaji mwai kibaki had made promises to the people of kenya and therefore there was a deliberate effort not to make the provincial administration very visible yeah it was literally invisible although the kibaki administration was using it to stabilize itself and the country and so when the 2007 elections came along this was the situation the provincial administration was not operating at the same level it had been operating under moi yeah because of those circumstances i've explained and the result was chaos yeah the tribal clashes we saw yes the provincial administration nisumu it's not a good thing as far as kenyans are concerned however it is key for a government and especially the government's internal security docket to have the provincial administration very active and in place that is how intelligence information is received from each and every corner of the country that is how the government manages to deal with various crises including post election troubles that's the truth now fast forward to the present the provincial administration today in kenya is much stronger much better equipped than it has ever been in the history of the country in fact the provincial administration has come back in a very big way it is even being used more than moi used it yeah during his draconian 24 year rule of the country now don't get me wrong i agree the provincial administration is not a good thing especially in a country that wants to call itself a democratic country yeah where the will of the people reigns especially in a country whose constitution tells us it is the people of kenya who are boss yeah provincial administration contradicts that the way they behave the way they do their things etc etc however as i've said many times before on this channel for a democratic country it is good we find a way to get rid of the provincial administration however what are you going to replace it with especially now that we have county governments what are you going to replace it with so because you don't have anything to replace it with the provincial administration has to remain key even with all its evils even with all its things that are not democratic and tread yeah, on the rights bill of rights of kenyans but let's stick to our topic today the provincial administration is very much in power and therefore it would seem on paper highly unlikely that we will have any trouble yeah, in the upcoming general elections it would seem on paper that we are more or less safe it will be very difficult for anything to brew or anything to get out of hand in any part of the country because in matters like this the most important aspect the most important tool is the intelligence getting the information before the fact very important and the government is in full control of that i mean our internal security boys have even done assessments yeah of every area of kenya and they have told us the hot spots areas where they expect trouble or areas which are bound to have trouble if there will be trouble and so what is chris kumekucha saying is chris kumekucha telling us things will be okay definitely 
is Chris Kumekucha telling us that because of these factors, we have absolutely nothing to worry about? No! <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. And it is for a very simple reason. That simple reason is that trouble cannot be stopped even by the best well-laid plans. It cannot even be stopped by the super-efficient provincial administration. You know, nobody can predict the future. And because you cannot predict the future, you cannot be able to predict the emotions of people in the future. Yeah, because you don't know what will happen to trigger those emotions. That's really what it is. Even in 2007, although in the end it looked like the clashes were very well organized and well planned, the truth is the clashes broke out spontaneously. It was triggered by the emotional response of Kenyans to the announcement of the presidential elections. That's really what it was. To be clear, people don't go into a general election expecting to be annoyed at the end of it. No. They don't go into a general election, go into a voting booth and cast their vote, expecting that in a few days they will be in a terrible, mad rage. No, they don't. It is usually spontaneous. And so what really happened in 2007-2008 is that something spontaneous, the emotions of Kenyans, triggered the trouble. And some people got organized very quickly to escalate it, escalate the troubles and the violence, etc., etc. That is precisely what happened. Now, in 2022, we have a few very disturbing problems that could easily trigger trouble. Top on the list is that we have too many Kenyans in the country who have nothing to lose. What do I mean? You've lost your business. You've lost your livelihood. You have no steady source of income. Life is hell for you on earth. Yeah. And then the general elections come along. There are many things that you can do when in that emotional situation that you'd not ordinarily do. So that's one big problem we have. Problem number two, which is linked to problem number one, is that Kenyans are fed up. They're really fed up. They're fed up with the way we're being led. They're fed up with politicians. They're fed up with where the country has been brought to. In fact, the country has been brought to its very knees. Very high foreign debt. Very tough economic times. Kenyan voters are fed up. And it is human nature that it's not very easy to predict what a fed up person will do. For instance, a fed up wife who has just had enough from the husband. Very, very difficult to predict what she'll do. Because there are so many deadly emotions going through her heart yeah, that have caused her to be fed up with this man who calls himself her husband. It is the same in elections. It is the same in politics. It is the reason why many analysts believe that the number of votes a candidate called George Wajakoya, professor, will get will shock Kenyans. And this will happen because Kenyans are fed up. And fed up people will do things they would not have ordinarily done if they had not been fed up. That's really what it is. Bottom line, this is not a good situation. It is indeed a very terrible situation to be in as we head towards the most important general elections the country has ever seen. 
And it is very unfortunate because if anything unpredictable happens, it will take something so small yeah, to spark off things. That is the fear. Now this brings us to a recent notification from the U.S. Embassy. A recent alert that has puzzled many Kenyans. The U.S. government, through its embassy, has warned its nationals, its citizens, to avoid, wait for this one, a town called Kisumu during and after the elections. Now hold on a minute. I didn't hear the name of Eldoret yeah, mentioned. I didn't hear Kibra mentioned. They just said Kisumu, which has puzzled very many Kenyans. But of course there's a good reason. And indeed the news is not good. And sadly, this information is highly sensitive. And you'll find it in my latest weekly intelligence briefings. Number 81. Where I explain that this alert from the US Embassy is a very deadly red flag. Oh, so deadly. Yeah, it is not something that should be brushed off. No. And I'll tell you why. You see, the American intelligence services and community in the entire world is second to none. It is the best. It is the most advanced. If you are to get any information from the American intelligence, and of course we all know that the U.S. Embassy used information from the intelligence to issue the alert to their citizens. If you get any information from the American intelligence, the last thing you want to do is to ignore that information. There's usually a very good reason for that information. You see what has happened? Is that most Kenyans have brushed it aside. How are Zungu they don't know anything about Kenya? Huh? Think again. These people have made a mistake. The Americans have made a mistake. No. Anything. I need to repeat this. It's so important. Any intelligence information you get from the Americans. Uh, take very seriously. Because there's a reason. Now you can see details on your screens right now on how to get hold of uh, my weekly intelligence briefings number 81. In case you're not yet a member, in case you're not yet subscribed, please take advantage of that very special offer. Yeah, It will soon end, like the previous one ended, which was even better than this one. So please take this opportunity before the price goes up again. Yeah, And you see the advantage you have is that all the other previous weekly intelligence briefings you missed, you'll get them pop alongside this number 81. Yeah, so I highly recommend that you go for it. Bottom line, our internal security boys are very well prepared. They're fully alert. The government is very, very alert as we go into the general elections. Which means that if anything goes wrong, at least the government will be in a good position to limit the damage. The government will be prepared to handle virtually anything. Yeah. That is the good news. That is the reassuring news. However, the bad news is that nobody can predict the future. Nobody can even predict what will happen tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. Nobody can. That's the bad news. And therefore, my appeal to Kenyans is do everything in your power to maintain the peace. Maintaining the peace is much more important than who wins or loses the general elections. It is much more important than who rigs or who does not rig the upcoming general elections. Yeah. Please, pass that message 
to every Kenyan you know. Until next time, this is Chris Komekucha.